go to the Tools panel of Finder Designer and select the Rectangle tool. Now I'm just going to create a rectangle in red and I'm going to create another shape in something else, so like green or something else, so I can see it. That's green. Okay, let's go with that. Now you can see here in the Layers panel, you can move it up and down, so you can just select that and just drag it down, just below it now, or behind, drag it up there, it's above. But what you can also do is you can just drag that down and you can see as you do that, a little blue indicator just indicate there. You can now see it's been clipped and you can move it around. Position it like that, move backwards and forwards. Well, what you can also do is you can resize that. As soon, as long as you've got that ellipse there, you can resize it, move it around, reposition it, all those sorts of things. The rectangle stays in exactly the same position. You can select the rectangle and then you can resize that, but the whole thing moves. If you move this, you move it around, it moves with it. You might not want that. You can get around that, just go up here. Lock children, just this section here, lock children. As soon as you do that, you can then move it around. However, you still can't select the rectangle. If you go around like that, you just see, oh, you know, where, where is it? But you can just by selecting that shape, even though it's not movable, so you can position it like that. You can see you've got that there, that square, but you can move that around like that. What you can also do is you can also just turn it off, that ellipse, and then you can move it around still as well. That's another alternative way of doing it. However, lock children, put that back on again, and again, put this back on. So you can see, as I've done that, select the ellipse, move it around, reposition it, and it has to be selected there. What you can also do is you can turn around and say, well, I want it to be moved outside. I don't want that now. I'll decide, change my mind. I can move it outside. So I can select there and I can just drag it up there. And as soon as you do that, you get back to your green circle again. But you can also decide to go the other way. Just put it back there. And you can see it's back inside again. And you can resize all those things. What you can also do is you can duplicate it. So you can just hold down the ultra option key with the ellipse selected. That's the key thing, not the rectangle. Hold down the ultra option key and you can duplicate. And you can see you get two copies there. And now that will clip it even more. You can see you get virtually nothing, a thin sliver with that design. Again, go back to the rectangle. You can lock children and you can still move that around and you've still got that thin sliver there. However, I'm not gonna do that. So deselect that and you can again continue to move that. So I'm just going to delete that now. What you can also do is you can go up here to layer and there's an option here, arrange and move outside. Does exactly the same. So move outside, just moves it outside, position it like that. Now the rectangle will come back in a sec. There it is. Not certain what those imperfections are. And you've got your circle still. However, now if you do the opposite, you think, oh, you know what? Now I've got my I want my clipping back again. Now you can just go down there and just drag in there if you want, perfectly reasonable. But you can also go to layer and arrange and move inside. Now move inside doesn't do the clipping. This time it does the clipping for the circle. So this time the circle has gone inside this, this parent, it's become a child, and you can move it around. And you can see it's cropped or clipped. And you can move that there, position it there, hold down the ultra option key, create multiple copies, and you can see they're all the same. They're all being clipped there at the edge of that parent. Also, select the rectangle. So with the rectangle selected, again, you can go to lock children, click there, and now the children are locked, you can move that around again, resize it, reposition it, etc. Also, lock children, turn it off, so it's again back to normal, and move it around, and they will follow the parent. So that's all like that. Now, what you can also do, again, select there, and again, just go to layer, arrange, and move outside. You'll notice there's also a move inside, because what you can do is you can have things inside, 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 got multiple levels of inside. Makes it very complex designs, but really quite useful, I think. Very nice sort of unusual designs. So you've got those. Now what you can also do is you can combine with the other one as well. So I've got this ellipse, this one, let's just change the color so you can see that it's different. So I'm just gonna go with say a blue design there and it's outside. So you can move it around, do exactly the same as before. You turn around and say, oh, I want that to be the clipping. 
just simply select and drag. And again, as long as it goes for that one there, that rectangle there, and release, it clips that. And you can see then you move it around and you can see again your rectangle, but it's been confined by this circle, which you can resize, modify, etc. And also, of course, delete if you don't want it. You can just get rid of it, etc. as well. However, what you can also do, of course, you could, to be honest, let's just select that. You can drag down and you can see you can do exactly the same there with that. And that makes a bit of a mess in terms of... So that's become for that one, for that ellipse. You can do lots of combinations of these things if you want to do it. Makes it very messy at times. However, what you can also do is just go here again with a rectangle, create another one. This time I'm going to use a diamond shape, just another shape there, and again a different colour. And I'm just going to go with, say, red, orange, etc. Edit and cut. Now with that selected, this is the container or the, going to be the parent, you can go to edit and paste inside. So now it's pasted inside. And again, you can move it around, reposition it. So it's exactly the same as before now. Now it's not clipping it or anything like that. It's clipping this is being clipped by the parent. And again, hold down the alter option key and duplicate, do that and create different designs that way. And again, select this, the parent, lock children, and you can move it around again, reposition it like that, or resize, etc. Also, now I can do go up here, there, resize that as well. There's also another thing as well. You've got here, well, maybe let's create another shape, probably a star this time. Go with a star. You can insert it like that, and you can see that's obviously on top. Let's just change the color. Lots of color changes, lots of different things, so you can see the differences between it. That's on top. I don't want that. What I want to do is I want to insert behind. So select the star, and you can go up here. You notice there's an insert up here. Well, actually, it's also in the top right as well. I put it there. That's in my customization, since it's more easy there than right over the other side. So now click that, and as soon as I create the star, now it's created behind. So it's not inserted in front. And you can see that down here on the, in the layers panel, it's behind it. Again, with that selected, I can gain apply it, but this time I'm gonna go for this one, the second option. And this time it puts the default behavior, which is on top. And again, you can do that, create multiple copies on top. But you can also go here, and click this one, which is the third option. With that one, create it again, and now it does exactly the same as the diamonds. It's actually created within and inside the design. And you can move those around, resize it. And of course, if I go and create another one, now, this is where it starts getting messy, because if you accidentally got that, still got that selected, it will insert inside that one, which is maybe not what you want. Now, well, you can, so you can actually just go over here, say the insert this one. I'm just going to go and create insert, and I'm just going to create a star again. And I want that one selected. So that's the star selected. You can see the star selected. Create another star, but I'm going with behind. So I can create another star, and then it's put it behind. Technically, let's have a look in the color scheme of things. Makes it, yep, you can see it's behind. It's not always so obvious when it's the same color. So you can see it's being placed behind. But also you can do exact same there, you can go insert, and this time I'm gonna create the star, and it's inserted, it's on top. But also, you can select, say, a diamond, I'm just gonna select uh, not that diamond, because it's out of the view, you've got that design, you can go here with the star, with that selected, I can go to the, this bit, insert inside selection, I can create a star, and these stars now are created within this diamond design, which is obviously within this container parent. But also you can select that diamond. There's the diamond there. It's a parent to its, obviously it's a parent. So you can say lock children and you can reposition that and move that around. Or you can go here, deselect that, and then resize those and they will all resize as well. And again, another thing you can do, hold down the ultra option key and duplicate. So you can create multiple copies of that as well. But not only that, you can also probably end up doing the clipping on those ones as well. I think it just becomes the point of quite complex designs, but the possibilities are there for all those sort of combinations of ways of working with this. 
Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.